Hello, good, good evening to each one of you. It is a privilege on my part to, to present our speaker for tonight. Ang napaka especial na tao sa cantus. Without him, there's no cantus. So, it's none other than Alejandro Consolacion II. So, Alejandro Consolacion II, or we simply call him Sir AJ, enjoys a dual career as an organist and composer. He studied organ at the Westminster Choir College in Princeton, Princeton, New Jersey, and received his performance and licensiate diploma from the Royal School of Music in London with distinction. He is the organist at the Union Church of Manila and Santuario San Antonio, and the music director of Cantus. His compositions are published worldwide by Hinshaw, GIA, Santa Barbara, Pavan, and Hal Leonard. So, without further ado, may I present to you Sir AJ Consolation. Hello, Pagalitang uh, sa inyo, guys. So, thank you very much and uh, for that wonderful introduction. Maggie. Uh, it is so nice to see you here. So tonight uh, we will talk about score or score reading. So let me uh, share to you the, the, the slides. So but this time I would like to start with a game, okay? So, everybody uh, get ready with your typing skills or your computer skills. Um, I will ask you some questions. Then, pabilisan tayo, no? So, kung sino yung una, yung first four winners will get a CD of the Misa Immaculada Concepcion, the one that uh, we played a while ago, and then the Misa de Santo Nino de Malolos, the one that I recently composed. So we will send the recording CD to you. So we have uh, four questions, and I will ask you about this first question. So tell me, what is this symbol mean? Ano yung symbol na yan? Okay? May sagot na ba? <laughs> next! This is the next symbol for the second item. Okay? That's for the second item. Ano daw itong symbol na to? Kindly type. And please monitor who gets the first right answer. Alright? The next question for our third item, what is this symbol? <laughs> Enjoy ba kayo? Okay. <laughs> Alright. Okay. And then, for the last, by the way, autograph CD yun, ha? So, bilisan natin ang ating pagtatype. So, this time, this symbol. <laughs> okay, so everybody responded to the question, what are these symbols? And do you know that music is actually a symbol? It's actually a piece of music, a piece of paper that provides a lot of symbols. So these are the things that we are going to talk about tonight. So first, let's talk about what is the meaning of symbols. What are symbols? Symbols are marked signs or words that indicate, signify, or are understood as representing ideas, objects, or relationships. According to the book Signs and Symbols, a symbol is a visual image or sign representing an idea, a deeper indicator of universal truth. Symbols are a means of complex communication that often can have multiple levels of meaning. So if the composer put notes on the music sheets, 
and then we call that as a symbol. We experience actually his infinite ideas even if the composer is no longer with us. Even if the composer is already deceased or dead, died, uh, uh, died several years or a decade ago, but still his music is alive because of that symbol. So now, let's talk about the score, the magic score. Ang dami-dami sa mga kurista, no, every time nakakakita sila ng piyesa, sabik na sabik sila. Bakit kaya sila sabik na sabik? So ano pa yung something na ano? Kasi ang lagi nang sasabihin, yes, may makakanta na naman kaming bagong kanta sa choir. And sometimes you are so eager to get the score if you have this favorite song. Yes, because that actually contains an information. So we were going to take a look, more in-depth look about the score. So mind you, number one, I will not here to teach you how to read notes. So that's the reason why I asked you to read your homework yesterday, because that is actually a review for you to know what is the note value and what is actually the name of the notes, clef, etc. These are actually review. That's why you, you look at it. But this time we will put more in-depth on how to look on the music. So this is part one, the score anatomy. We will look at the anatomy or the parts of the score. And here, we have the first page of the pattern Oscar. So if you have the first page of the score, it tells you already a lot of information, correct? There's a lot of information here. So let's take a look at it in a more in-depth information. Dame, no? So here, you can see the page number. All the blue things are actually uh, information that talks about information on the score. But the red one, I guess, talks about the information of the the technicalities of music. So now let's go first to the title. Title is very important because you cannot find the favorite music of yours if you don't know the title. But the problem is the title, like Pater Noster, there are several composers who compose Pater Noster, like Igor Stravinsky, like Fidel Kalalang, like Joel Navarro. Several people compose Pater Noster. So what are the next identity you need to know? Of course, the composer. The composer is so important because in the composer year, ah, I'm no, the 1980 is actually a year that will tell you what kind of musical period you have on this music. Remember that music have different kinds of periods. And we will talk about it here. Can you imagine that these are the musical periods that choirs are singing you are starting from a Gregorian chant, which is a medieval piece for across 18, 800 years, down to modern period to our present time. So these are the periods of music that probably you are already encounter while you are singing Western music or also Asian music. So let's go back. Here, AJ Consolation, born in 1980, obviously, living composer, modern composer. And then he dedicated the music. Very important in dedication. It's not because it reveals private um, uh, information like yung mga ex-girlfriend, no? Hindi lang yun, no? It talks also about the association of the composer to the group kung sa sinulat. Why is it that it is so important? Because sometimes that first group creates the most informative performance of the music he, was, he composed. So if you really wanted to listen to the performance of the first performance of that work and, give, and get more information on how the composer wish to sound his work, listen to the first performance. But I'm telling you, not every first performance will be called the legendary performances. Remember Igor, Igor Stravinsky's Rite of Spring? Oh, that's a mess. Do you know other performances like the uh, Four Seasons by Vivaldi? That's another messy performances. It is probably because composers compose music in advanced language or advanced thinking that 
sometimes the present generations cannot easily comprehend. That's why it's a fluff during the first performance. But it is fun to know where and who performed it first. Another thing that you need to know is the subtitle. Because instead of scanning the score from page one to the last page, the subtitle technically tells you about the forces of instrumentalists or singers you are going to have on the score. So you need here an SATB chorus with division. So probably it creates eight voices somewhere in the middle of the score, probably at the beginning. And then you have a two soloists, a treble, soprano, soloist, and it is an acapella. So this is already an information. Poet or the lyricist is very important as well. Why? We will talk about this more about vocal music and why is it that vocal music is so important to music because again that's the life of that music because of the text now let's talk about the instrumental names so that one associates this with the subtitle each part have its own line and these things happens at the same time right so now, what are the contained elements you have in the music here? So let's take a look at this one. You have the staff and you have the cleft. The cleft actually tells you the, 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 the voices. If you see a G cleft, for example, you know that it is meant for soprano. If you see a G cleft again, you see it's for alto. A tenor cleft usually have an eight number below the cleft, that means an octave lower, that's for the tenor, and bass is for the bass clef. Another thing that is important is actually the key signatures. So you know what these key signatures are, right? So key signatures will tell you what key is the score, and then what kind of quality is the score, is that it's a major or a minor. Another thing is the time signatures. So there are so many things, the basic time signatures, and then the most complex time signatures are probably a combination of time signatures. And then again, the tempo marking. The tempo markings actually tells you the speed of the music. Well, you have a lot of names from this, Italian names, grave, lento, largo, adagio, down to prestissimo. And then corresponds the beat before per measure, which means the mathematical beat corresponding the tempo. Some composers actually write the tempo markings in an Italian letters or names, and then they will supply the proximity of the tempo. Is the tempo uh, exact tempo ng composer ba yung lagi natin hinahanap? Well, it will vary because live performance is a different situation all the time. If you are in an acoustical places like, let's say, ma reverb, we have to adjust your tempo. If you don't have a reverb, then you can probably speed up a little, a little of your tempo. But this proximity of tempo provides already the idea of the flow of your work, or the flow of the music. Another thing that uh, I want you to, to take a look at this is the copyright. So I will not touch the copyright thing because I'm not actually a copyright lawyer, but you have to know a little more of the copyright that all the music that is contemporary or music, music of the uh, composers that is living composers are actually with intellectual property, which means a property of the composer itself and the property of the publisher. So any photocopying or illegal photocopies or distribution of pieces under the copyright uh, year is illegal. But there are good news. If you will go back to the history of your periods, you will hear, you will see here 
that, dude, until Romantic period, down to medieval period, you will get actually free music. So imslp.org is one supplier of free music. So you can download and enjoy that. You, know? you can actually even create your own editions of that music. So now let's go to the second part of things that you will look at the music technically. The notes. The notes have its equivalence. So why is it that the note is so important and why is it that composer notate the note exactly what kind of note value he wanted to happen? For example, in this first bar, he just wants this do in four beats. Because music is communicated with exact sound so that the information of the sound per bar will be accurate. But again, it doesn't mean that your four beats is the same as my four beats because I have a different heartbeat. My heartbeat is faster, my four beats is faster. Your heartbeat is slower, your four beat is slower. So every human being experiences different kinds of beat, but they have same meaning. Dynamics, pianissimo, piano, you're all familiar with these Italian names, which means pianissimo as very soft, piano, piano as soft. So the question is, when I composed Pater Noster and I said, piano, how the conductor will actually interpret the piano? Ah, that is a very good question. That is something that we are trying to decode on our next part. Dynamics can vary. Can you imagine that for example, Fe have a pianissimo note like Fo, and Aura have a pianissimo like Fo. That kind of sound is different, correct? Especially if you have two different people doing that. So can you imagine they are singing the same pianissimo, but they are producing different kinds of sound. It is because of the instrument and the quality of that instrument. And us singers are actually what? human instruments. So we are capable of creating different kinds of degree of dynamics. And in that dynamics, you're creating a variation of the sound of that dynamics, which means your pianissimo is not the same as the pianissimo of a big person if you're a skinny person. Or probably if you are a skinny person, your brilliant sound is not as the same as the fat person. Correct? So technically, things vary. To dynamics. Articulation, imagine that staccato, marcato, stachisimo, sporzando, lahat yan, may symbols. And why is it that the symbols is important? Because the effects that is provided to us by the composers or the legato, how long the lines he wanted you to do, or to if you wanted as a piano to create a more appreciated sound, he will actually uh, create the kind of uh, the kind of uh, symbols. So symbols is very really important because symbols actually tells you the ideas of the writer the composer. So let's go back again to the slide. All right. And now we will go to the part two of our presentation, decoding the score. Paratective, no? To decode or to know what is the meaning of the composer's idea sa score or sa pieza.
do you have any experience before that you will join a choir competition and your conductor is you see him quite nervous or probably if you're a choir conductor you're kind of nervous when you got the contest piece o kahit wala pa yung contest piece at kilala mo na siya ang gagawa ng contest piece you know the composer you have this idea na gusto niyo ng kulitin and asking sir when are we getting the score probably it is because you are urging to know what is inside the score and probably gauge if your choir can handle it or can deliver it properly am i correct so these are actually i will just put in to the words the things that probably you experience because these things are so important because you can also analyze this if you're not a conductor you can also learn the score by asking these kinds of questions. Remember I said before that vocal music and the fundamentals of vocal music, choral music or voice music is actually the text. Text is very important because the text is actually the one that creates the story of the music that you are seeing because there's words on it. There's a story in the words. So how many of you are reading the text or mas nauuna yung inyong pag-aral ng tono, and then after that, you just read the text. Or probably, you are already seeing the music without understanding the text. Uh, so the text itself will help you to interpret and probably give you the concept of what kind of music you are singing if you just know the text. So these are the considerations that you can probably ask if you are dealing with the text. What? Is the text syllabic or fragmented? And how this syllabic and fragmented text affects the transmission of the text from the composer. For example, you have this uh, piece. Alleluia, alleluia. It's a single word. And then it goes again. That's a composition that I did with only one word. Alleluia. So if you have this syllabic, syllabic is actually per word. Alleluia. 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 That's syllabic. Fragmented comes with the idea of melisma. When we said melisma, melismatic, it has more curve of lines on a, on a, on a single vowel word like Alleluia. With many notes in between. Ale See? Alleluia, etc. So how this kind of things affects? Maybe the syllabic creates a more faster deliberation, while the fragmented creates more stretching of the music, right? So it creates more feelings into it, creates more invoking of emotion. It depends. The tempo is fast. And probably the stretch is a little faster. Syllabic, if it is fast, the more it is shorter. Ha, these kinds of considerations or decisions means, means can be derived when you look at the text. Next, how does the text influence the reader? That's what I've said kanina. Alleluia. See? Or Credo inunum deum. Syllabic, right? But it is very, very short. But the rhythm becomes more punctuating, a little shorter, but it is permanent. Or probably as fragmented. Credo inunum. Something like that. Then you see it's more fluid. So how the text influence the rhythm? Another thing is the story. Sing a song of six, a pocket full of fire, four and twenty petals. You know the song, the song. It's based on the nursery rhyme. Or probably Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Daniel Elder did a wonderful settings of that. So how the text influence that? Twinkle 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 Twinkle. The rhythm that interlocks all together at the same time. Creates the twinkling of the stars. 
So it becomes a rhythm of the music. It becomes the, the, the foundation of the music. So search for that. Daniel Elder's Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. <laughs> Next. Are there awkward syllables or words? And how can they be handled? Ah, yes. This is so true. There are some music that there's an awkward syllables. Uh, the accent is wrong and probably you don't actually know how to, to do it. Like... Papuri sa Diyos, sa kaitaasan, at sa lupay kapayapaan, something like that. So, how are you going to adjust your tempo? So, Papuri sa Diyos, sa kaitaasan, right? So, you actually create decisions based on how you pronounce or deliver the text. And then next. Can instances of word painting be found? How can a conductor highlight these instances? This is very important because the word painting is present in every genre of music from Gregorian chant to modern music. So we will have that later on when we listen to one of um, Eric Whittaker's music, Looks. And then the thing is, is the text most important? The question is this. Everybody here knows the Alleluia by Randall Thompson. It's so beautiful. The melody is so beautiful. But how many Alleluia do you hear on that score? It's until page 17 you hear the Alleluia. The text is, most, is, is the most important. I think sometimes the music become more important, especially if you have the text that is repeating and repeating, because the music becomes actually the form or the structure or what you call the motion. Yung andar ng what? Andar ng music. Okay, so now let's go to the next thing that you consider. So first, repeat, huh? Text. Second is what? Melody. You have to take the melody as a consideration. The thing is, the melody, actually, you think it's so easy because, well, the good melody, you can actually hear and whistle it along if that is so touchy. But that's the reason why. Because it is so easy to take and love good melodies that we forget to see the parts of that melody. <laughs> but the parts of the melody affects, if you know, your phrases. So does the melody consist of long or short phrases? I'll just give you the questions first and then we will look at the music later as I play one piece after this. Can any sequences be found? You know the sequence? Yung paulit-ulit na Christe, 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 Christe. That's a sequence. So paulit-ulit. So that's actually another form of the melody. What are the intervals of the melody? You know the intervals? The, the distance between the notes. Probably the intervals can be also a step. Do, re, mi, do, mi, do, sol, sol, mi, do, do. Those are intervals. Are there any intervals that will cause problems for the ensemble? Yes. Some people have problems while singing the night. Do, re, do, re. Like that. This one. Or the seventh, yeah, or this chord, this interval, the ninth, seventh, ninth, major or minor seventh, yeah. This can be actually a problem. Or probably if you are singing non-tonal music, ah, there's a lot of interval problems because you don't have a normal harmonic references. So there will be a problem with that. So how your conductor and how do you handle it, you need to have a references of that melody what is the range of the melody very important to know uh we will answer this later is the melody at the most important aspect of the composition yes kung yung melody ba yung mismong buhay ng composition may mga composition pangit ang text pero ang ganda na melody yes that's true but is we need to know that of course because we have to interpret the music and prioritize which is important. And then last 
is where is the most important part of every phrase. Ah, because the phrase, okay, let me explain. What is the short and long phrase? Just for the review, phrase is actually like a sentence. You have probably a short phrase, which is an incomplete phrase, and probably you have the long phrase, which is a complete sentence. The short phrase is a comma, and then the long phrase consists of a period. Yes, so now let's move on. And I want you to listen to this lovely piece by John Rutter. I want you to look at the considerations of the things that we talked about, the good melody. Thank you very much for that. That's a wonderful piece by John Rutter. So uh, we have these kinds of uh, things that I want to, to discuss to you. So let me share the screen about the clear benediction. What is a but the question is, if you try to, uh, guys, can you mute your sound, please? Uh, if you have this, It's a beautiful melody. It's finished yet? Not yet, diba? Hindi pa, no? So imagine until here, until here, hindi pa siya tapos. It will be cut by the tenors until here. This is actually the period. No? This is actually the period. Can you imagine how long it is if you will go into think about that phrase? Of course, you can read, but the thoughts of the direction of the music, it will start from here until here. And then another story will begin from here. Continues. See? Holy the funny thing about here is John Rutter used this fermata, but actually, again, this is a comma. And then suddenly you have the fermata. The fermata will actually give you a feeling that, is that the period? Is that the end? No. There's another. And then you see, yun yung secreto eh. Yung hindi pa tapos phrase, nagkama, nagkaroon ng fermata, hindi pa tapos yung phrase. And then actually, uh, hindi pa tapos yung ano no yung 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 line nagfermata na siya pero yung line ng music o yung putahe no yun yung yun yung something na kung bibili ko ng pyesa kasi may ganito yes <laughs> yes you have a long phrase and at the same time you have a wonderful melody so you see how we see it it's really long. And then continue until here. Wow. So now, uh, let's go back to our, I know, let's go back to our slides. And then. Another thing that we need to, to consider is actually the uh, harmony. Okay. Harmonic. Uh, considerations. 
So harmony is very important, especially uh, for the choirs, no? because the harmony can actually determine what kind of styles of music you are performing. The harmony of Baroque and the harmony of Renaissance and contemporary is definitely different. Every genre have different kinds of harmonic style. The harmony is the most important element of the work. May mga ganon. Yung melody, hindi siya masyadong element ng piyesa ng music. And actually, the harmony is the one that gives it beauty. You will listen to Eric Whittaker's music, and I'm telling you, this number two answers that. What part do non-chordal tones play a non-harmonic structure? What is non-chordal tones? Example, you have a D flat. You hear the D flat, right? When we inverted the D flat, it's still D flat. If we added a non-chordal tones like E flat, or probably a G natural, ooh, in D flat, supposed to be G flat yun eh, bakit may G natural? What makes it so special? Oh, di ba? So parang pag kinunta ng choir yun, no? yung flower yun nagyan, parang tubig. It's because that tone creates a different sound, not common sound. Harmonic interest. Is it often derived from the harmonic tenon? Music creates extension. In ka magre It ends. So music has the tension, the high part. So, paano nakikreate or paano naapektuhan ng harmony yung tension na yun? And how the dissonances works on that tension. Wow. So, now, let's enough for talk. Let's listen to this and then try to the full composition by Eric Whittaker. So, in the consideration with that harmony, you will see the qualities that you see on the dissonance, how the dissonance affects, and then probably after that, the consonant. So for your vocabulary, consonant is actually a plain chord without any clash or probably notes that inflect the, the, the structure of the triad. So yung tatlong nota. Do, mi, so, do, mi, so. Right? So if you put a clash, and then that's dissonance. Okay, so, paano nahahandle ng harmony yun? Kung paano nakikreate ng dissonances and, and consonances. So, moving forward, harmony is, ano, ano na tayo? Text, melody, harmony. Next is rhythm. Wow. So, rhythm considerations. Are there any rhythmic sequences? Very equal yan sa mga ating compositions sa Philippines, no? yung mga folk natin or yung mga ethnic natin. Dang, 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 dara, dara, dang, da. Repeat. One, two, three, then. Same. Repeat. So, these kinds of rhythmic sequences are also equivalent as repeat. Or probably See, that's a rhythmic sequence. So, ang tanong, kung ituturo mo sa choir yan, pwede mo nang sabihin 16 bars na repeat. Alam na nila yun. Unless, babasahin nila yung 16 measures, tatagal kayo. So, you have to see that on the score. So, you have to study the score para alam mo kung paano mo ituturo ng mas madali. Because there are actually rhythmic sequences. Next, are there one rhythmic pattern on which much of the rhythmic structure is based? Like in this base. Bass, dun, dun, dun. Tenor. Dun, 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 dun. And then alto. So these are actually rhythmic patterns. No? Ang tanong dyan is, pare-parehas ba siya? Or saan siya nagbabago? Kung may nagbabago doon sa gitna, you need to highlight that. You need to see that because these are actually creates the variation of the music. And then, Next is the tempo. Is the tempo directly relates to the rhythm, difficulties, rhythmic complexity, or the slow tempo made it easy? You know the, about the tempo, the tempo, you can sing a piece as fast as you want. Basta, you make it sure that it is clear. If the things is not clear because of your tempo, then probably slow it a little bit so that 
all the things can be cleared. Now, here, before we end part two, is I want you to consider listening to this piece of music. It's Popo Alimpaco by Feliciano. Sorry again, I lost the slides. So we listen to Okay, so here, uh, you will see here the dung 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 dung. Actually, pattern yun eh. Pero nagbabago yung rhythm, nagbabago yung time signature, di ba? 3 8, and then pamisa nagiging 5 8. So, ngayon, pag nagbabago yun, nagki create ka ng variations while the interlocking, and at the same time, papasok yung melody na. So, every time that you have that, it creates different kinds of layers. So ngayon, ang question is, binibilangan nyo ba to at sinasabi nyo na itong seven bars parehas lang, itong bars na to, tatlong beses na ulit lang, is the same? So that's one way of actually learning this kind of uh, music. So now, uh, another thing is, the the dynamics or the 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 articulation not the dynamics napansin niyo ba yung dum 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 that accent hindi naman sinulat ni Francisco Feliciano but why is it that Fidel Kalalang is putting that my answer is why not that actually creates more precision dun sa rhythm and at the same time it creates more direction do some music. So these are actually decisions that the conductor or the artist do so that he can actually interpret the work well. But the thing here is this. Gusto ba yun ng composer? Paano pagpatay na yung composer? Kagaya ni Feliciano. Is that correct? Paano kapag nag-compete kami? 
at hindi naman nakalagay doon ng accent, but we put all those accents. Ma-disqualify ba kami or we get a minus? Well, the thing here is this. With this kind of music for Feliciano, if you actually know him, he will not put everything. And I remember asking him, Sir, why you don't put everything? Well, here in Alem, because he's a professor at Asian Institute of Liturgy and Music, he says that here in Alem, we try not to put everything so that the musicians will actually find something. If you find something that is more interesting in the music, and that, that becomes the music process for the interpretation. So we, now we will go to the next part, the score and the performer. So hanggang ano ang limit ng performer to interpret the composer's score? I always believe this. It is really, really hard to, to say that some uh, people view this differently. People say that, well, the performer will be the one who will be masusunod, and then the composer, well, it's just a guide. Music is just a guide. I think you have to be on the center, to be on the balance so that we will know. First, if you listen to my lecture a while ago, we said that the music score is full of symbols. And if we were going to interpret symbols, and if the composer put all the information on the score, and then rightly so, you can actually have the clue on how his music will work. I always believe on what is Martin Bobber says about the trust in the performer. He says, the relationship of trust depends on a state of contact, a contact of my entire being with the one who, in whom I trust. The relationship of acknowledging depends on an act of acceptance and acceptance by my entire being of what, of that which I acknowledge to be true. This is really, really true because it is so hard to interpret a composer if you don't know him. How will you know his works? It is impossible for the composer to know his works primarily because you first met him. For instance, how do you go to perform Mozart properly if you only play one Mozart? If you play one Mozart and you're good, your second Mozart will be very good. If you play three Mozarts, and then probably it is much better than the two. And then if you play the Mozart, probably all your life, and you don't have any composers, you're only playing Mozart, and then you're the Mozart specialist, and then probably you know him more and more and more. That is actually true about interpreting the composer because we must know the author. We must know the composer's intention. This is actually the problem nowadays with the 20th century. During the time of Baroque era, the composer is actually the performer. If you take a look at Bach, if you take a look at Handel, if you take a look at Mozart, if you take a look at Claude Debussy or Rachmaninoff per se, those early modernist uh, thinking, or let's say, for example, Ryan Kirbyad, the few, or Father Manuel Maramba, few people who can play well, who can play the piano, or organ, at the same time, compose really, really well. So if you have those kind of composers, you actually see firsthand how his music will sound. But the thing here is this, how many composers do we have right now? How many documents do we have right now? So these are the tips. And these are actually the questions. Trust the music, trust the composer. You might not probably trust the personal uh, life of the composer because life is not different. Separate the art and the music and the life personally. So we're talking about the art. Trust the composer's art will lead you to something because you will know actually the sound of that composer if you will trust him. Because after all, the composer already defines in the paper what kinds of tempo, what kinds of dynamics, what kinds of phrasing he wants. But again, I'm saying paper is just a piece of paper. It's just like the musical play. If you have the script, script is just a script. How are you going to realize the script? How are the actors going to essay the script and put his expertise on acting? Based on now, that is actually same true with this.
this the beat, the tempo, the rhythm, and so on. There is a problem here that I will answer after we read this one. The text is always the first defining parameter. If you have a problem to, to know the composer's language, then read the text, because probably he also read the text and set it to music, and then the text becomes your common ground to know the music. Now, about the parameters, the tempo, the rhythm, there are so many, many performers trying to change the notes in the score simply because they felt it's not good or simply because they felt it's not working with their group. Is that correct? The answer is definitely no. Because what makes a notational marking there for a performer's responsibility to take note of it and to trust the composer's intention? Otherwise, choose another music that you are going to trust. Choose another music that you are going to love. How about you as a performer? As a performer or as a conductor, trust your own judgment. You know your choir. How many of you are conductors here? You know your ensemble, you know your singers. Don't choose the piece that is way beyond the technique of your ensemble, or probably choosing the piece that is actually so hard that the ensemble will not actually enjoy it, or probably choose the piece that is so easy that you will go into bore your singers. Choose the right piece that will facilitate the technique of your ensemble. You know, if you are having a good technique in your choir, and at the same time musicality, any kind of pieces you can actually tackle from simple to difficult. We must acknowledge that our own reason why we are doing and are performing the music. So here's again the question from our first session and second session. Why? Why are you here? Why are you doing this music? Why are you singing this piece? We must acknowledge the basic responsibility of why so that we will be more honest musicians when we perform. Remember, it's not about you, it's about the music. The next, knowing and familiarizing yourself to the musical language of the composition. Again, as Raita said, it is impossible to do it once. If you know the composer, it's probably because you listen to his works a lot, or you know a lot of his works, not only one work, or probably, you are becoming familiarized because you sing a lot of his compositions. And for, for conductors to be able to rehearse and perform to a high degree of detail of musicianship, the singers and the instrumentalists must be able to find trust in the one whose musical imagination they are trying to turn into a reality for the listener. After all, it is actually for the singers. The composer already gave you the score. If you will be able to trust your conductor as singers, that this conductor has the ability to understand what is in the music and translate that into musicality. And then that trust becomes your cornerstone of building good music. Let me end by reading this wonderful quote by one of my hero, the great American conductor, Robert Shaw. He says, Although one can agree that a composer begins with a text and that it is his inspiration to a certain respect, it is the responsibility of the performer. It seems to me to satisfy as nearly as he can the composer's language and then seek what the inside of the composer saw, how he might have felt about the text rather than arriving at a textual philosophical relationship with the text that is one's own personal interpretation and forcing upon the composer. I can remember once that somebody said that Bach was the greatest witness to the crucifixion of Jesus. Not that he happened to be present, but because he has a witness to the meaning of the crucifixion. It is all about trust, my dear friends. Music making and learning music is about trust. And here, Robert Shaw is stating to you that the higher form of trust is faith. If you have faith, if you believe in your faith, and then probably things will happen for better. 
So again, I hope that uh, it uh, helps you. And if you have questions, then probably you can type your questions. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Sir AJ. Another, um, another light bulb moment for all of us. <laughs> another new learnings that is very helpful for us as choir singers and for those who are um, those who are who wants to further study in composition yeah and so this is a big help for you now it's really inspiring as a matter of fact i'm going to to listen to the replay again because <laughs> <laughs> too many information and i need to grasp everything you know as a choir singer and, and as a teacher as well so thank yeah, you yeah maggie excuse me yeah, yeah thank you so much actually i encourage you we will go into post this recording because I really speak so fast because this is actually a lecture for one week. <laughs> I plug everything for one hour. So, yeah, I I'm telling you, go back and review what I've said because there's so much that, uh, you know, you can, you can actually uh, pick a lot of things. Thank you. All right. Um, before we move further to the Q&A, Sir AJ, would you want to announce the winners of the uh, the winners of the games that you gave a while ago? Actually, I don't know who's the winners, but <laughs> we will actually we can actually announce it's a Facebook, no, it's a Facebook. Ah, group. okay. So we can okay. actually start now. We can All actually right. start now with the Q and A. Okay. So we start. So for the Q and A, for the Q and A, we only have to answer a few questions. We are going to pick. Uh, questions now but you can actually type your questions and I will record my answer and I will actually mention your name and we will be posting that also to our Facebook mm -hmm. group so that you can actually have follow-up about things that uh, we can uh, we can answer okay so just type your questions if you have questions please type your type it on the chat box and we'll try to answer Sir so AJ will try to answer it all. If not, just like what he said, now he's going to record the, the answers in the video and then will be posted on Facebook. Okay. So we have a question from Angelo Valencia. And he mm -hmm. says, I can't find the right technique for reading grand staff. Can you share to us how you can easily read grand staff? Grand stuff is actually uh, reading like you're reading a pianist uh, or piano composition. No? The grand stuff is a G clef and an F clef. But can you imagine if you can actually read a choral score, an SATB score, which we call open score, yung four, line, yung four staves, no? soprano, alto, tenor, bass. And if you were be able to read that properly, and then you can actually read a grand stuff. Here's the clue. Here's the tip. Number one, Music have two ways. So imagine a cross. This is your harmony. This is your melody. If you are learning each part, for example, the soprano, if you are learning your alto part, if you can actually learn, dahil mabagal kang magbasa, or nahihirapan ka magbasa ng sabay-sabay. Learn each part. Sing individual lines, and then sing the individual lines hanggang matapos mo lahat ng linya. But I said, sing that lines, papatsa-patsa -patsa din. Huwag masyadong yung from one, top to bottom, no? Just say, bar one to five, so that you can actually see the phrasing. Remember the phrase? The phrase, uh, the comma, and then the sentence. If you actually find that, and then if you hear new sections, na yon, then probably you hear everything sectional. Now, I want you to listen carefully. That is actually the melodic part. No? I want you to listen carefully to the line, like this, which is actually the harmony. If you listen to that, you must know the chords or the harmony. So you look at the score, kung ano yung chords don na hindi pare parehas. Are they singing in unison, number one? So if they're in unison, no chords, no harmony. But if there is 
a harmony, then probably you encircle that chord, which you find it difficult because it's not actually a normal triad. Triad. And probably it like, it's like this. So if you have that, then your ear, you are actually training your ear. You know, uh, learning to listen is also a skill. You cannot learn it overnight. You have to listen and you have to do it over and over again. And when you listen to music, when you listen to the, to the, the, to the chord, you have to build a memory. You know that the chords are patterns. These are patterns. And that patterns are playing into our mental you know, capacity. And then if you were able to understand that, if you will be able to, 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 to hear that, and then we define patterns. No? So I think it is the familiarity of the patterns. So how do you go know the patterns? It's you. Because you can actually tell me what is red and what is blue, what is black and what is white. Mm. If you will see the music that way, uh, I see this chord as white. And then you can also look to the other white of other composers' work. You see? You can see also other blue notes on other composers' work. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. So AJ, another question from Dexter Dapitan. He says, he says, part of Namsha is a Renaissance piece and we had a hard time interpreting the piece. Cantate Domino by Monteverdi. What technique can you give Po in interpreting a Renaissance piece knowing the piece itself is highly technical since it's polyphonic? I want to correct that. It's not highly technical. Every music is highly technical. So the term actually, I think, is it's the style. The style of the music, probably like Monteverdi, which is an early Baroque, is different to us because we are not actually Westerners. We are Asian people. And it is not actually our culture. Ikaw ba'y sinilang sa Pilipinas at sinigaw mo, ah, Monteverdi! Hindi naman ganun, di ba? Ang unang word natin dito is technically pista. So kahit hindi mo alam ang pista, makakasayaw ka ng tango, makakasayaw ka ng balitaw. Kasi yun ang tugtog sa baryo mo. Pero hindi mo maririnig yung tugtog ng Cantate Domino Canticum Novo. It's something different. It is actually from Venice in Italy. Mm. So if you have that kind of music, first, know the geography. Where is Monteverdi come from? Know your history. And then second, ito yung lagi kong sinasabi. Huwag lang yung piyesang yun ang pakikinggan nyo. Pakinggan nyo yung iba-ibang word ni Monteverdi maliban dun sa Cantate Domino. Exactly. He composed a best verse. And if you listen to it, then you will inherit the style. You see? Etong point eh. Nung si Michael V, nag rap na siya, hindi siya nag-click. Di ba mag -rap? Sorry, tanda ko na. No? Yung mga matatanda ka, ano ko, ma makaka-relate dito. Michael B. before is a rapper before turning to be a comedian. But he is not actually click as a rapper, but it is Francis Magalona who becomes the prime rapper. So meaning to say, I'm not saying that Monteverdi clicked. Monteverdi also have some classmates who write this kind of style. Have you listened to those kinds of composers? So again, it will go back to the, hmm, to the, to the history. Sino yung mga kasabayan ni Monteverdi? Ah, kasabayan pala ni Monteverdi si, ano, si Heinrich Schutz. <laughs> so if you know Schutz, you will technically have an idea. Or Gabrielli, Andrea Gabrielli. If you know these people, you have already an idea how to interpret Monteverdi. So it is the style. It is the style. Familiarity of the style. And if you are familiar with the style, I'm telling you, your technical problem will solve easily. All right, thank you so much, Sir AJ. Now we are down to one question. Um, this is from Vince Anthony Ruiz. This is quite controversial and it's really happening. Very realistic. Sir AJ, 
Paano po if the conductor mismo ang hindi nag-trust or very different ang interpretation niya sa kung ano ang gusto na sound sa composer? Do you have any tips on how to handle this kind of problem? Ang hirap kasi, no? Dahil it's because uh, the music as what I said is so broad. From Gregorian chant down to our era, napakadaming composers. And everybody have a different kinds of, uh, of trust. The thing here is this, mas madali mong mabuking yung conductor na hindi marunong mag-interpret ng piyesa kung buhay pa yung ini-interpret ng piyesa. Correct? Because you have a direct references. You have the YouTube to check kung yun yung tunog ni Eric Whitaker. Or you have the, the YouTube or the Spotify to check if that's the Lauridsen or Ola Jello sound. See? And actually, the, the game here is not about the comparison of sound. The game is about the understanding. What we are trying to discuss today is actually how you understand the score. If the conductor actually understands the score, and then it is because he opened himself to understand. Remember the prayer of St. Francis, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. That very words is very, very strong. If you don't love what you do, you don't trust. So everything, every musicing, yeah, I love the term, musicing, it's about music making. If we said musicing, every musicing must start from us. Probably it is because we love something and we trust something. If we have that, then we become more humble. Those great conductors, I'm telling you, you will know because of their meek and humble heart. Their disposition will always point that it is not me. It is not actually the composer, it's the universe. It's actually the collective relationship that happens between the group and between the music that is we perform. So again, to, to, to finalize that, what he will going to do First is to understand, and it must start from him. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, um, we still have two more questions, but maybe um, Sir AJ mm -hmm. needs to just record sure. uh, the answer, and then he posted it in Facebook group. So again, thank you so much, Sir AJ, for that very wonderful. Oh, do you, um, I think we have time. Do you want me to answer the the two questions so that <laughs> I can we no longer record? I think we have time. Yeah, it's, we'll just do some announcement later. Um, All right. But okay. So it says here from Carlo Miguel Bar Barrios. Before the lockdown, we were learning your composition, Alleluia. One problem we encountered with this piece is the difficulty of memorizing it. What tips can you give us in memorizing music where it is driven by the melody rather than the lyrics? Remember what I've said about patterns. Remember what I've said about looking at the pattern. The Alleluia have this irregular pattern, the syllabic and what? The melismatic. So remember those two things. If you can actually define those two things, those patterns, and then you will understand it. And then second, I think, uh, it, this is not only for the Alleluia. This is so true about other pieces. Some choirs and sad, some actually conductors teach choirs without the context of harmony. They only teach the choirs like, oh, soprano, halik kayo. And then the conductor will pull up the line of the soprano without them realizing the other parts. They don't actually know the alto part. They don't actually know the tenors and the bass. The effective rehearsal, I guess, is to give them the big picture first at the beginning. You're not actually, at the first rehearsal, you're not aiming for perfection. You're actually aiming for giving them the big picture idea 
so that they will get what is in that new thing. If you actually have the, you know, the idea of that big picture, and then it is much easier for them to learn their parts. Because right from the beginning, you already teach them not only their own part, but the relationship of their part to the other parts. So it's really more on the ear. You know, uh, this is uh, very controversial, but I will tell you this. Uh, this is taken from Dr. James Jordan, one of my teachers at Westminster Choir College. And he says that, you know, the choirs can actually sing only major keys. They cannot actually sing minor keys. And in solfege, they actually not singing the right actually solfa names. What they are actually hearing is based on the theory of Edwin Gordon audition or audacity. Yung hearing daw natin, pag meron tayong narinig na something, let's say, na ganitong chords, nadidinig natin actually yung ibang nota. Kaya usong-uso yun araw eh. Imagine mo, 1960s pa lang yun, wala pa tayo. Yung mga lolo't lola natin, pag nagpapasyon, nagpapatungan na ng boses eh. Wala naman nakasulat na nota doon. Nagbiblend lang sila ng pusa. Di, di, can you relate? Or yung mga choirs, let's say, yung mga kumakanta sa simbahan na walang nagtuturo. Pero ba't sila nagkakaroon ng voicing? It is because they know the notion of the harmony. They know the notion of the harmony. People are not, no man, you know the word no man is an island? That is also true to the choir or to the music. No man stands can and stand alone because human being is actually corresponded to harmony. And it is built to us. So if we actually knew the harmonic sound because of re a memory or remembrances, and then it is so easy for us to discern the pattern. That's number two. Memory of the harmony, discerning the pattern, and then when we discern the pattern, we will learn easily. So for the, for the question of Alleluia or other pieces na may mahihirap na pattern, again, learn it slowly, give big pictures first, and then learn the patterns. If you learn the patterns, you're, you're good to go. Okay, thank you. We have one more question. Do we still have time to answer? So it's from Gia Hernandez. How, yes. How to teach the... I'm going to translate it in English for the sake of the foreign participants. So how are you going to teach difficult intervals, especially if the parts are not um, part of the chord? For example, alto or tenor are the difficult part or... The, not part of the chords. So what are you going to do with it? Or how? There are many ways. There are many ways on doing that. Number one is technically knowing intervals with a corresponded sound. For example, an octave sometimes is a difficulty. Can you imagine that? An octave, which is actually the same note. So you can actually, if they have a difficulty with that, then associate that to other songs. Like, somewhere over the rainbow, the octave. And then if they have problem with the and then if they have a problem with the minor seventh, why not sing there's a place for us? You know, be creative about uh, getting music that have that same interval so that they can actually hear. And then lastly, what you can do is to prepare them through vocalization. Ay, hindi. Second pa lang to. May pangatlo pa akong sabihin. Second is prepare them to the vocalization. You vocalize them based on the interval that is difficult on the music. Remember, onset on the vocalization helps the people not only vocally, but hourly. This is true. Conductor, so listen to this. If you make your vocalization so effective because it prepares them hourly, and then when you introduce the music, I'm telling you it's miraculously easy. Because, for example, so you choose uh, a choir, for example, have a problem with the seven. Something like that. And then when they started to sing, so everything is there because they hear actually the 
harmony already. You see? They already hear that harmony. And then they always go to that seventh chord. Automatically, because over and over, you do that again to the vocalization. That's number two. And then number three, uh, you have to devise a game. So somebody will sing the root, do, and then the, the other person will sing or the sections. Probably the soprano and alto, they are singing the two notes because the more they have, again, with the word relationship, <laughs> if they were able to sing, choir is relationship, you know, you cannot sing alone. You need everybody. If they sing it together and they, they hear those hard notes, those hard intervals together, and then if they sing it and they swap it together, then probably the ear also gets it. So I think those are solutions. Okay, I like that word. Choir is relationship. So thank you so much, Sir AJ, for answering the questions. And in line with the choir is a relationship, of course, um, we need someone to guide us on our, um, for the, the next part of the activities. And um, so we will dis announce the, the choir chief, okay, or the section chiefs rather. So the music director, of course, is Sir AJ. And then the, 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 there are two music heads and then now the section chiefs. Um, so for, for the section chief, we have soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, all right? So they will be there not to boss you around, guys, but to help you as we do the, the recording and the, of the virtual, for the virtual um, online recording and video. So, for the section chiefs, um, you can just say hello. <laughs> so for all the sopranos here, here so the the section chief would be Chris Ian Nazareno. Ian. So he he is our how should I say it counter tenor. Counter tenor, yeah. So yes, so all the sopranos, yes. kilala ninyo na, si, <laughs> si Chris. All right, thank you so much, Chris. And then for the alto, we have Gia Hernandez. Gia, can you wave your hand, say hi? Are you there, Gia? Okay. Andito po. Andito Ayan. Po. <laughs> so siya po. She, he, she will be the one to help the alto section, okay? And then for the tenor, we have Romy Miranda. Romy? Can you say hi? Hello. Yeah. Thanks so much, Romy. So tenors, huh? Go to Romy. <laughs> okay. Um, and then for the base, base chief is Vin Alicante. Hello, Vin. Maybe you just wave your hands. Okay. Are you there, Vin? Yeah, maybe he has some um, data problem, but anyway, um, you'll get to know him anytime so we're going to post the pictures so you know the who we are <laughs> okay and then um aside from that um there will also be an associate section chief from the vu participants of course um we we want you guys to be involved as well and how can you be a section chief and how how will the process be no to for you to be um, chosen as an associate section chief so may i call on our events coordinator our events director rather um mr juan paulo lentino to further explain about associate section chief and the the description of 
of his or her tasks. Hello, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you, Ate Maggie. Uh, from here, I will be uh, explaining what this, the associate section shift uh, would be. So as mentioned earlier, uh, there will be section hands and they, we will call them as section chiefs. So we know that this project is not just about the Cantus. This project is about you guys. That's why we want your participation. That's why uh, the associate, associate section ships would be coming from the voice and voices and bound participants. So this is how it's gonna be. Each of your section chiefs would have their own strategy uh, based, of course, uh, on their need. They will be the one to gauge uh, what kind of uh, partnership they would be needing from uh, the prospects associate section chief. And then um, for them to know you guys, they will be creating uh, group chats for each section. And that would be the time where it, you will collaborate with each other. So th this is the time you can like uh, put your best foot forward and then you can actually nominate people who you think uh, would fit here. But uh, that's not actually the end of it because upon, like, you, you can like, mention names and then some of your section ships would ha probably have some games to know you better. And of course, uh, I'm pretty sure that not everyone here knows all the participants because we're yeah. uh, coming from different parts of the Philippines, mm -hmm. right? So this is a great avenue for us to know our co-section members. Actually, it's going to be easier, of course, if you know that he's also a tenor, but there's already that connection because you see, sing on the same range, the same line, and you have that kind of like um, connection, all right? <laughs> and then... Um, our, and then those section ship would be uh, sending their recommendations to the music head. And now the music heads and with our musical director, Sir AJ, they would be uh, screening those uh, who would be nominated for uh, each section to become the associate section ship. So that's basically like a challenge for everyone. Again, guys, this is your chance. Uh, we are encouraging your participation because this project is not only for us, but it is for all of us. Mm -hmm. Okay, you are, uh, you have a big part of it. And one of the main uh, goal of, of this project is for us to produce recording, the virtual choir. And with those associate section chiefs, we would be playing a big role here. So that's all. Uh, if you have any question, um, of course, uh, your section chiefs would be uh, reaching out to you and you can actually tell them your concerns. Thank you, Ate Maggie. Okay. Um, yes, okay. May announcement lang ako. Uh, guys, thank you very much actually for your, ano, no, uh, for your participation. No? Nakakatuwa naman at every Saturday, eh, ano tayo, very alive tayo, marami tayo. Ang ano ko lang, ang, ang i-remind ko lang, one of my reminders is to make sure, please, to always uh, check your Facebook uh, group because uh, uh, from time to time, you refer to your calendar because we are posting it on time, yung mga materials natin. So just always refer that. And then next week, we will release actually the, the next vocalization uh, series. So medyo walang nag-check sa inyo, pero please do it. Because it will actually prepare you sa, sa virtual choir. And then third is we will uh, release the, the, vocal, ano, the vocal guides for Be Not Afraid. So once that we, ano, once that we uh, send it, uh, your section leaders will start to communicate with you for the submission. That's it. So thank you very much, guys. All right. So um, we call it, let's call it a night. So again, thank you so much for joining us. And um, we are going to, to, um, to post on Facebook the, the recording.
for the replay of Sir AJ's very wonderful um, talk. So again, this is, this is Margaret. Thank you so much and have a pleasant evening. Of course, uh, before we end our program, um, may we call on Sir AJ to give us uh, another inspiring poem uh, to cap our night. Okay, guys. So, uh, as we call for the night, let's uh, pause for a while and probably remember those people who helped us this week and those people we lost this week. So, we are praying also for our country and other countries uh, around the globe for a remission of COVID or the pandemic. So we lift up everybody also for their uh, personal problems, their financial or any family problems or any kinds of things. And we also lift the thanksgiving of other people as well. So may these words from Luke chapter 1, 46, 48, always help us to proclaim something that is great. So let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. So may God bless you all and have a great 